Hello once again. Today we have a new online discussion of the Expert Analytical Club. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Today we'll discuss the COVID pandemic, the info pandemic. We'll discuss the role the media played in here, including the Belarusian media. We'll discuss the fakes and myths that Belarusian doctors faced in their daily life and what can be done today to help doctors fight the COVID-19. My name is Natalia Kentievska. I represent the Press Club Belarus and I co-moderate today's meeting. I would like to introduce our speakers. Maria Avdiyeva, who is the research director of the European Expert Association from Ukraine. Pavel Bekovsky, a media IQ expert. Anna Barushka, who is a immunologist. And uh, the meeting is moderated by Vadim Majeka, representing the BISS. A few more points before we start our discussion. The meeting consists of two parts. The first part is the speakers' uh, presentations. The second is Q&A. If you want to comment on something or add a remark, please write your questions or commentary in the chat or raise your hand. For this, please select the uh, uh, Zoom settings. We're recording this meeting. Um, the meeting will be available on our YouTube channel. Later, I will send you the link in the chat. I want to remind our speakers and the guests about the chat I'm happy with. The participants of the Expertological Club do not have the right to a quote uh, anybody speaking today, but this will can be uh, um, bypassed. If you want to say something that should not get into the recording and you want to, want to be recorded on, please warn us ahead. We will remove this phrase from the recording and other guests will know that they, they are not to allowed to use this new word. I do not quote on you on that. The floor is yours, Vadim. Thank you, Natalia. I'd like to thank everyone who has joined us today. Uh, 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 a wide circle of experts. We are joined today by doctors and partners, including the Belarusian um, Foundation of Medical Solidarity. We still have a special guest today who will tell us about the, the results of the survey that the foundation conducted in the social feeds about the coronavirus fakes. We will describe them a little later. For now, I would like to start our discussion by uh, discussing a wider context because looking at the, what is happening in, in Belarus, in those information space, uh, the fakes spread up here, we see a lot of uh, national fakes that are connected with the doctors. At the same time, fakes of in the international nature are penetrated to Belarus. Sometimes they are quite funny, like reptiloids, but some sometimes very often those fakes are quite serious. We get these fakes uh, via the Russian media space as well. I would like to give more now to Maria Abdiva so that she would tell us about the wider context about how the Russian information space influences Belarus and what fakes we get from there. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, it is great to participate in the press club meeting. I always follow your work with particular great attention. I'm glad to participate in it. As to the international conference, at the very beginning of the pandemic, the WHO introduced the term infodemic. It was about a huge number of the various information sources, both true and false, misinformation and uh, other kinds of fake information. People were lost in that. P 
people found themselves in the chaos and uh, they faced fear not only in the national communities but in the world they were flooded with information and they didn't know where to find sort of true information it all created a favorable environment for misinformation and bogus stories to procreate the countries and organizations that wanted to use this chaos did that among such countries where the coronavirus became a possibility to solve their own to achieve their goals to tackle the challenges to get preferences they started to actively and successfully use this topic first they started uh, doing this by introducing uh, fakes fabricated stories into the media space later they changed the, the context changed now it's not that much about the coronavirus it's mostly about vaccination and everything connected with vaccines while the origins of the virus doesn't get that much attention and information because people are not that much interested in that um, there's a lot of information about the influence of uh, an effect of the vaccines have on people how dangerous or not dangerous they are it is an issue not only for Belarus and Ukraine, but for all the countries. The, the, not many countries have a high number of vaccinated people. I believe uh, our doctors will tell about this in detail. But looking at the statistics, we can see that the number of vaccinated people is relatively small. In Ukraine, it is relatively small as well. Yesterday, I I mentioned about the healthcare ministry that was steam trying to prompt people to get vaccinated as a sap. I posted the information and photos from COVID hospitals that show how difficult it is for people to cope with this, where they are on ventilators. Still, under this post, there's a lot of commentaries about anti-vaxxers coming up with theories that you probably all have heard about, that it's all fake and, uh, and all that. So this is a problem that we all face, not a separate country. All democratic countries um, were faced with such a challenge. There were several factors that influenced the situation. Why fakes and disinformation became to move and spread fast. One of the major factors for this was that the general atmosphere of uh, confusion and fear engulfed people. Secondly, this the uh, people's liberties that were curtailed. Remember how the free Europe was trying to regulate the masks and self-isolation and uh, those musts for people who have always felt very free to move around. That was a priority for them. Besides, since at the very beginning, there was a very little communication offline everybody went, got started communicating online and it uh, prompted some spread of the misinformation not only through social feeds but also via uh, messengers so the information became viral it took only several hours for such information to cover a huge number of people because uh, social feeds are moderated, moderated and messengers are not. 
step by step the social feed started moderating all the content related to the coronavirus if you post something about coronavirus on uh, facebook you will see that there, there's a warning that this post is about pandemic coronavirus so you can turn to this or that website for official information youtube blocks videos about the conspiracy theories uh, promoted by anti-vaxxers so the social fees were trying to prevent the, the viral spread of such information at the same time messages like viber and telegram widely spread in ukraine and belarus they did not moderate the content which allowed for content to spread as fast as possible create people to create groups and use this information further as to the Euro ukrainian context we had a case of sanjara when at the beginning of the covid pandemic one of the first planes evacuating Ukrainian citizens from China was heading to Ukraine. They were supposed to be isolated on their arrival because nobody knew how it's done, you know, what tests should be taken. And so the authorities were trying to find a place for them to be kept. Uh, so they found this place, Nova Sanjara in the Poltava region. The situation was used in order to create um, and uh, conduct an information, info information campaign. It later turned out that it was connected with the people from the Russian Federation. Basically what happened when the plane arrived um, and people were taken to the Nova Sanjara, and there were several fiber groups, the admins uh, started regularly posting information that the infected people were being brought to Sanjara, that uh, the authorities wanted to uh, basically liquidate people there and to... So there were some provocations, open provocations, saying that the authorities want to infect the locals. The aim was to have the country the clashes of locals with the police many of you saw the videos when uh, people started pelting with stones the, the buses carrying people basically using the viber perpetrators managed to tell people to implant uh, this idea that the the, the people that will be brought would be infected and contaminated. The Russian propaganda actually used these videos during the investigation. It turned out that people were be, who were behind the administration of such channels, posting, posting such information there, were connected with the network of the Telegram channels that uh, regularly promotes the pro-Russian mess messages since i mentioned the russia in this case just wanted to say a few words i don't want to take too much of your time i want people to have a q a anyway so i'll tell you a few words about why russia uh, benefits from it so it's not only ukraine who says that it, russia is to blame for that the eu does info and a group of from the European Starcom conducted its own research. According to this results, it turned out that the majority of the misinformation and the bogus stories regarding the coronavirus originated in Russia. Why was it beneficial to Russia? Because the situation of chaos and confusion it created favorable conditions to promote the the message about the failed Europe and failed uh, state. Uh, look, you have been trying to 
move into Europe and uh, Europe cannot cope with the challenges. So uh, you, they're not helping you. The message was that it leads to the collapse of the European Union. If you remember, there was a mask diplomacy when the masks were shipped to the countries neighboring Russia. It was like, like a PR stunt showing that uh, Russia is not uh, living their own people, helping their own satellites and friends, while Europe is not capable of helping the countries who are members of the European Union. So this principle of uh, divide and rule was being used and abused. The idea was to strike it in this place point to uh, achieve chaos. Contradictory theories and messages were being promoted at the same time. They were promoted both by the Russian TV channels featuring people who spoke about the various chips and uh, conspiracy theories, the various theories that were gained uh, millions of views. It was beneficial to people who wanted to create informational chaos, informational chaos. Eventually, they wanted to say that you should believe me because uh, you, we, you have found themselves in the atmosphere where you cannot believe anyone. And I'm the media outlet who will tell you how to live, what to do. And this chaos, it was the countries who promoted misinformation about coronavirus were interested in it. Apart from Russia, there was also China, Iran, but for our region, the major promoter of the fake news was Russia. I'm going to stop here, and I think we could uh, continue later. Thank you very much. I think we'll discuss this further, particularly when we talk about the role of the visual information in promoting fakes and then fighting them. In our region, uh, the Chinese and Iranian influence are not that much interesting for us. We are rather interested in the Russian influence. Now I'd like to give floor to Pavel Bakovsky, who represents the Media IQ project, who will tell us more about how the Russian influence affects the Belarusian society and how much the Belarusian, Belarusians were affected by the Russian TV shows about the chips implanted. So on the one hand, it, it is a, a propaganda. On the other hand, uh, it's about the people who are trying to promote these messages uh, with no harmful intentions. So, Pavelyuk, tell us more about how this fakes was spread. Well, the Belarusian view was watched the Russian TV channels who are hybrid, but I perceived as Russian at the beginning of the 2020. The sort of channels like the RTR, Belarusian, ONT, Belarus. Told their viewers about the awful coronavirus pandemic. At the same time, in the Belarusian uh, news, they were shown on the same channels. The viewers were told about the fears that were far-fetched and the Russia was doing, was, was choosing the wrong path while shutting down its country due to coronavirus and the Belarus was doing the right thing. Since nobody could see the virus, you could uh, heal it with the uh, sauna tractors and uh, vodka. The important effect here was that there were two pictures for Belarusians. The Russian one, that the, that coronavirus is dangerous, and the Belarusian 
media picture where Alexander Lukashenko told people that nothing wrong has happened. The, there are some hysterical messages from the West. There is some collusion of the pharmacological companies. So he was acting like the main virologist. There were lots of conspiracy theories broadcast at the time. Most importantly, it affected the people in a strange way. The Belarusian authorities were uh, hiding the figures, uh, trying to prevent them from making public or being public. I mean, the coronavirus figures. There was a public movement that appeared. They were tried to help the doctors fighting the coronavirus, that tried to help the victims. And uh, these grassroots movements even uh, reached the TV land channel level at some point, but later they were removed. I can connect the discreditation of the reliable source of information at the beginning of this thing, because the Belarusian authorities had to explain why they're doing the right thing by not closing any time, anything. At the same time, there was an attempt to control the information space. At first, it was non-effective. Those propagandists used the definition of the WHO about the pandemic and uh, told the viewers that there's no proven data about coronavirus. And uh, most, it is important to note here that this information was promoted by the token heads, the quasi experts, not the real ones, or was made by the people who are officials. Even, even if they had a different opinion from the that of the head of the state, they echoed what Lukashenko said. It particularly affected the public opinion. What else could be noted here? One of the main narratives that still remains in the Belarusian media is that the coronavirus situation is under control, despite the fact that there are rumors and uh, messages from the independent media uh, and those published by the op opponents of the authorities say that the situation is not under control. There's two sets of information, messages. While at the beginning of the pandemic, wearing a mask was a, a, a choice of the knowledgeable person compared to the person who presented the, or supported the ruling regime. Now, when Lukashenko said that uh, you shouldn't have introduced uh, limitations and, and checks, he said, uh, again, called them masks, muzzles. It could be seen as a, a strange case when a person appears uh, masked in the public space. On the whole, there were some restrictive measures introduced in Belarus concerning the rights and liberties of the people, but they were very special, they were very particular. At the beginning of the year, there were limitations on people visiting libraries, and bars, cinemas, sports centers. Later, the, the limitations were later lifted. The major limitation remained. It is that during the election campaign, there were issues with holding mass events that had to do with the initiatives not controlled by the authorities. Belarusians were limited from, uh, restricted from leaving Belarus, going abroad in order to fight the pandemic. One of the latest narratives is that uh, in, in the August last year, the propagandist machines of the Belarus and Russia were synchronized. 
Belarusian media started using the same experts that were promoted the Russian uh, world. So the uh, Russian, those quasi experts became virologists and they started explaining in a strange way strange things about the coronavirus and the mutations. But people don't want to uh, get some restrictions, but the authorities should have been, should have treated this issue in a different way. One of the things that those propaganda joined the Russian counterparts uh, in the bad mouthing of the foreign vaccines, all of a sudden Belarusian media outlets used the context, content claiming that there are lots of uh, negative effects of the vaccines used in the EU and the United States. At the same time, they praised the Russian Sputnik V vaccine. There was some information that uh, Russian vaccine would be produced in Belarus. What is explained by the fact that every state should have its own vaccine as a pride. But we see that uh, sometimes representatives of the healthcare ministry on TV saying that uh, people should wear masks and wash their hands thoroughly. At the same time, the officials show with their own example that you should not wear a mask. Uh, during the latest meeting, of uh, Lukashenko became clear that well in the past there were attempts to check people joining those meetings for COVID. Uh, now it is uh, not done. So the direct message that uh, Lukashenko is trying to say that he's not afraid and you should not be afraid either. And Lukashenko visited the COVID patients in the hospital without wearing masks, saying that claiming that you know. Not, there's nothing to be afraid. In conclusion, I, I must say that the, the Belarusian TV channel said that the Western vaccines have side effects, but did not say anything that overall in the world, over six billions of uh, shots of vaccine were produced and the side effects are very minor from the scientific point of view, according to the uh, experts, uh, those side effects do, are not directly linked with people getting vaccinated with the anti-COVID vaccine, while the Russian authorities insisted that it is impossible to die from COVID other than from uh, its consequences and effects. Today, they're not saying it directly, but when this issue is raised online on um, on TV. They say that there are some shortages of vaccines and difficulties with vaccines. They're creating a picture that while the post-Soviet uh, citizens got used to the many things being non good quality in the Soviet Union and uh, but selling things abroad, quality things it turned out that uh, things abroad are not that high quality either. Uh, people uh, get confused due to those messages. Uh, we see that the officials are not willing to admit their mistakes. While at the beginning, when the coronavirus um, wave engulfed Belarus, there is also a desire to hide the figures, the true figures of coronavirus victims. And there's uh, some messages coming from the officials in Lukashenko that the main thing connected with coronavirus is the conspiracy, conspiracy theory of uh, pharmaceutical companies. Thank you, Pavlyuk. The key word here is inconsistency. 
we say that the authorities trying to contra constantly contradict each other and uh, we see that now it's really strange to go outside without mask after the latest a meeting involving Alexander Lukashenko. We see also the contradiction of how some things are perceived in this by the public and how the law stipulates them. All these arguments in against the Western vaccines lead to the situation when the local people do not trust in the local vaccines either. It is supported by political arguments and not by the medical arguments, unfortunately. Now I would like to give floor to Anna Barushka, who is a medical doctor facing those challenges every day. One thing is to read about those fakes in the news. Another thing, when you see people coming to the doctor with coronavirus, symptoms and nice to read on her camera and how is does this all affect the opinions of and uh, of the people who come and consult the belarus and doctors the patients on the one hand they perceive some messages from the media on the other hand they turn to doctors with particular symptoms, how much are they affected by those fakes and misinformation? Are they ready to listen to the doctors when they meet them? And what do doctors think about this? Anna, please, the floor is yours. Let's say my uh, sample is quite unusual because currently I'm outside in the country, I'm not in Belarus. I don't uh, have any patience. I don't know what the, my colleagues in Belarus face when they uh, have patients coming to them. But there's a certain group of patients whom I communicate with. Unfortunately, all the points mentioned by the previous speakers led to the situation when the people are not trusting vaccines. The most knowledgeable people have uh, got vaccine shots. By the time the COVID was raging, when the vaccination campaign was launched, people were already informed about the consequences of the COVID and they know who they should listen to and who they should, shouldn't listen to. It's hard for me to say where they received the information from, how much they were affected by the viral fakes. But people received so much information they have never had never come across without a doubt the pediatricians uh, regularly faced such situation over a number of uh, years a child needs to get vaccinated like tens of different shots a regular doctor does not did not really know about it did not see it so the only thing they knew about and came across is that the tetanus shot. All of a sudden, they uh, had to explain to people they need to get vaccinated. As an immunologist, I never came across the issue, faced the issue of the vaccination. It happened very seldom. All of a sudden, every adult needs to get vaccinated. The majority of people had questions and asked questions. There was also a big problem 
in the sense that the Sputnik vaccine is very much affected by the Soviet heritage. If you have an allergy, if you, any kind of allergy, potentially you uh, could be an unsuitable patient for vaccination. So all of a sudden, uh, they included all those uh, side effects into the contraindications. At the same time, the American colleagues don't have such negative side effects in the list of the things that should prevent people from getting vaccinated. A big number of people do not trust in vaccines, any vaccine at all. They call it a test on people. They uh, say that this is a fake, a fake drug. And by doing this, they uh, devalue the work of immunologists who work on the vaccines, even though they know nothing about this science. The producers of the vaccines they did not promote the the vaccines well enough i mean the Sput sputnik vaccine they do have some publications in the journals uh, the sputnik has not been recognized by the who either we have to face the situation when people saying we don't want to be vaccinated with something unclear. There's a number of doctors also who should know more about that, but uh, more about this than laymen. But unfortunately, there's a big number of people, a significant number of people who support these myths. Unfortunately, there are medics, medical nurses and doctors who uh, issue the fake certificates and they destroy the vaccines. This is really sad. In any other developed countries of Europe, this is a sign of unprofessionalism. A person, person doing that is fired from his job because this is by doing this, doctors are harming people. And basically, they should not be allowed to harm people further. From old times, immemorial, times immemorial, the main um, goal was not to harm people. I don't think that such cases are investigated in the post-Soviet space. I don't think that such people get punished for doing this. I think they're still working. I hope that they will change their viewpoint on the situation. But I'm not sure of that. A big role in the anti-vaxxing is played by the lack of information and awareness about the side effects. The, how people react to vaccines. And serious people should know that serious side effects occur very rarely, very seldom. Like really small number of people suffer from that. There can be some reactions like headache and uh, some weakness, some uh, edema, 
and it only shows that your immune system works you need to be ready to face the virus in this way what else can be said about the about fakes would like to see good examples of and informational agenda from the side of the heads of state for a number of days president macron uh, supported vaccines saying that they are working well also experts who are real experts know about this who are responsible for regulating vaccines should speak more about that inform people that they have significant data about this it was not present in the wider media space which led led to the lack of trust on the side of the people unfortunately this still continues i was afraid that but this unfortunately happened until people see the close relatives die until people you know start dying of coronavirus in bulk people will not get vaccinated during the first wave of the pandemic we saw anti-vaxxers die of covid i think the same is happening in belarus right now unfortunately this is a failure a big failure of the informational campaign it has to do with the lack of the proper um, coverage and also the lack of promotion coming from the real doctors that the vaccine is good vaccine helps you vaccine protects you that if you get vaccinated you will not die you will not get in the icu then more people could be covered but uh, since the, some people some doctors were confused we have what we have last year when a colleague of mine was started his lecture the, the pandemic started and a colleague of mine was starting a lecture for doctors and i thought it was about covid but it was not about covid at all in this regard i uh, was pretty sorry to see that my colleagues did not really want to become uh, so the so-called covidologist and uh, come up with the proper measures to fight the disease and to raise information awareness of people about this this was not the case unfortunately the myths were being spread by the patients by the colleagues that led to a huge number of unvaccinated people among doctors there's still a big number of those but in september we held service in the small groups somebody surveyed the colleagues or friends the, the, there was a huge number of unvaccinated medics today i have a, a class of the medics 50 percent of whom were not vaccinated and they are 50 year students this is the really strange statistics they should have gone and got vaccinated by showing the, with their examples that this will help people get saved indeed when an unvaccinated doctor will tell patients that the patients should get vaccinated this would not sound very convincing and it's very logical to expect that if the doctors don't get vaccinated they probably 
know the reason why it should be done. Thank you very much, Anna, for that. We'll get back to you later. Now I'd like to give floor to Anastasia Belushik from the Belarusian Medical Solidarity Fund. She will tell us about the information they gathered in the social feeds about the fakes that they uh, faced and about the widespread fakes in the medical community right now. Good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me to this event. I'm not going to beat about the bush. Uh, we uh, launched a survey in the social feeds asking for feedback from the doctors, asking them about the motivation or anti-motivation coming from the patients. So here it is. A huge number of messages they received of people saying that uh, they know people who got vaccinated but later died. There are lots of responses that the vaccine still under not fully investigated. The, some people said that it's a collusion, like it's a conspiracy. Also, some people believe that the uh, authorities want to vaccinate them to become uh, addicts in order to get further payments. The vaccine suppresses the immune system that the vaccines are dangerous, that the medics do not get vaccinated because they know it's dangerous. I know already mentioned this problem in Belarus, but it's um, mostly about this not being dangerous, but because they're not competent enough. After vaccination, I will not be able to give birth to a child, some people reply. If everyone is, gets vaccinated, there will not be herd immunity. Also, some people say that the pe people do not die of the virus, but rather from the vaccine. Some others believe that, uh, that some particles get infused with the vaccine. That sounds very much like a conspiracy theory. Others believe that uh, COVID and the uh, vaccines uh, came from the Rothschild Rockefeller family and Bill Gates who want to bring down the number of people living in the world. Also, some people say that uh, 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 the COVID was already described in the Bible and they lead to cancer changes in the DNA and also the chain smokers do not suffer from coronavirus as much as regular people. People also think that the only people suffering from coronavirus need to wear a mask. Regular people do not did. So people state that the uh, anti-vaxxers say that after getting vaccinated, people die very soon. Also, they believe that the vaccine would, could provoke the disease. And again, uh, it is the impotence uh, that coronavirus vaccine could lead to. Summarizing what you said, what do you think about the, the information that we are living with? Where does this come from? How do doctors have this information. I must say I fully agree with what Anna said, the previous speaker. It's a big pain for us. I believe that the major reason for this is a lack of knowledge, lack of information. It often happens when a person that needs to, is supposed to get operated on his appendix removed, he's afraid. But if you explain to this person that what it could lead to if not treated, the person would understand that it's important to do. 
if you we explain to people about the side effects of the vaccination, it would become acceptable for them. I still believe there is no single chain that led to this situation. There must be a mutual work of the state, of the public who want to who should accept new knowledge and information because the media campaigns and influencers should be involved bloggers should be involved in spreading the truth information on the other hand there should be control of fakes fake information that is not confirmed by anything it is very important Unfortunately, we witness this information being spread very fast online. It's hard to control it, but some measures need to be devised to stop it and to punish for it. A particular point that I wanted to stress, and I also mentioned that, that unfortunately in Belarus, one can buy a vaccination certificate. This is unacceptable. I agree that such medical doctors and nurses who uh, give out such um, such certificates and sell certificates should be investigated and uh, criminally punished i don't think they should they have a place in the medical profession Is there information how much such a certificate costs? How accessible is that for Belarusians? I'm not sure about how massive is it. I think it's about 10 euros. It's quite accessible, yes. It's not too, too much. Of well, we can probably find out who is ready to give such certificate. We need to understand that when such certificate is issued, a vaccine that should be given to the person is basically uh, destroyed. And we see an increase in demand for Chinese vaccines. We understand that somebody received a fake certificate paying 35 billion rubles and this vaccine shot was destroyed but there are people who do want to get vaccinated now but uh, cannot get access to a vaccine it is very sad natalia i have some questions can i ask it now or can i wait i have questions to anna and Anastasia. let's do it now Anastasia, you told us about the figures in the surveys. And it's my question. What is happening in the regions? Is there any information? And I uh, mean the, the rural areas, the towns, the villages. Can anybody help people living there? And also, are there any vaccines available? Do people know about vaccines? in terms of regions and rayons. This information is subjective. We don't get the information of the, in the systemic order, but we get some uh, small instances of information. Clearly, Minsk is very much different from the other places of Belarus. There is a lot of, there's a lack of oxygen in Minsk. And doctors now have to choose the patients and basically decide whether to give this or that patient some uh, oxygen. Very often, uh, it's just a person is uh, uh, taking blood, is, is uh, given a blood test, and that's it. And they are kept in in the hospital, no CT is made. I know that the people who want to find information, they can do that. I know that there are medical groups 
who vaccinate people in the regions. I think that's a great initiative. But how compliant are people and what methods are used? There were some orders, you probably saw pictures in the social feeds. When people are forced to get inoculated, get vaccinated, by a carrot and the stick. Instead of stimu stimulating people, people get punished. They're threatened with uh, uh, unemployment. Also, the a lack of the free media, independent media, became another blow who contributed to this situation. One of them is to buy TUT.by after working for 20 years, they gain respect from people. I know that people would be trusting to buy, but they don't have access to the information. I'm now in Poland, but using the telephone by uh, using email, I convinced my relatives and parents to get vaccinated my cousins my brother have been vaccinated because of my influence i also mentioned that but if every doctor in their place prompted this vaccination messages promoting these vaccination messages convincing people that this should be done we wouldn't have such problems now in belarus thank you and could you add anything about the regions have, have you heard anything about this from your colleagues of about what is happening in the regions it's hard for me to say today i read information in one of the chats. I was shocked by this information. But the situation in the regions was predictable. People are dying off, dying out due to the mass misinformation about COVID and later on about the vaccination led to what we have now. I'm not sure that we can simply change the mindset and opinions of the people. People are used to certain methods. I think that to a degree, this measure is justified because people are not used to anything else. Saying that it is 100% bad is not right. If it worked, it's fine. Once again, it's about education, about educating people. If the doctors who visit their patients, including ambulance, promoted this, and I remember how it was during the beginning of the pandemic, there were no announcement in the public transport in Belarus, while in Moscow and Kyiv there were some, and also the strict measures observed in the, medical, in the public transport in Moscow and Kyiv. There were posters about that that I not, noticed already in May. If people gradually got used to Kavin being around, Got, got used to the measures that uh, could save them. If people started trusting the people, the officials and the doctors were supposed to protect them from this pandemic. And I think it would be easier to have people vaccinated. And what we see now instead is that 
uh, real figures are being hidden and concealed so the public doesn't know what is going on i understand why people are resisting that because they are not used to get that to get vaccinated unless they were they needed a shot from tetanus they never really came across the need for getting vaccinated any new intervention leads to a well-proven fear this fear needs to be taken care of it needs to be tackled the violent measures just like in china when people were basically caught on the street and taken away by force those things happened we need to understand that that's the, the people that's the society we have before the studies in the post diploma diploma academy of the medical university stopped i uh, started promoting the, the idea of vaccination in the viber chats i published their information about covid not everyone can have access to this very often i shared some links to the english language website because the information where there was regularly updated again this linguistic barrier that cannot be overcome by the doctor cannot always be overcome by the doctor is a problem Our doctors need to be true professionals they need to continue the development the modern medicine healthcare speaks english fortunately or unfortunately there's a big gap in the sense that the doctors don't understand english or any other foreign languages it leads to big barriers that needs to be overcome locally in the vitebsk village you have access on to online resources to cutting edge information but people were checking their Belarusian national healthcare website to publish some information about covid and an epidemic while all other websites let's say uh, on facebook uh, had a lot of information about the covid prompting you to read information about covid when you go to the websites about healthcare in belarus you don't have any messages of warning messages like that which is bad the vaccine and information could be taken to the regions and in our it country we could have defeated covid with fewer people suffering if the information resources would uh, work timely and professionally as to the mass media outlets and the tut.by .by, at first when i saw information about .by, i compared to what was happening in what was published in the world and by Tutbai. Unfortunately, Tutbai did not publish this information similar to what was done in the West. Very often they publish information that uh, really surprised me and my colleagues. We lost the information war badly if the people 
were not that scared. There were some heroes, Dr. Markov, among them. All of a sudden, a person like that spoke up in the regions, saying that, that they are facing the COVID pandemic. Fortunately, there are a few people like that, but a few people that colleagues could uh, look up to. Unfortunately, the people like that uh, kept silent. And this is uh, hard to understand that why doctors are not brave enough to say that people are dying, that uh, people need some additional information support. Doctors should be the, the sources of such information. They had studied for over 10 years, some of them, at least seven. So basically, after studying for over 10 years, to become a medic, you understand what is happening much better than a layman who, don't, who don't, knows nothing about pandemic of COVID. We should have seen uh, medics speaking up more often about this. Indeed, we elect such voices. Move back to the media blog. I would ask Natalia, uh, please show us the meetings, the pictures of the latest journal. Uh, it's a propagandist media outlet newspaper called uh, Minsk Pravda or Minsk Truth. So, and the messages there that were about uh, COVID conspiracy, some uh, caricature. There was information about the conspiracy of the American program that Chinese, the Chinese cannot find any truth. And among all this, in the very center, we see the words of the um, prompting people to get vaccinated to help themselves. Well, I'm not surprised that people get skeptical about vaccinations after reading this. And uh, this is a good example why appeals to vaccination get drowned uh, by everything else, all other information that people come across. Pavluka would like to give floor to you and Maria. Let's discuss what exactly can be done in order to change this, change the situation, change this trend. Obviously, there's no uh, quick fix for that. But what can be done so that the people would be affected to improve the situation? Well, media experts know that people know how to and like to be afraid. The fears, they uh, boost the traffic. This is good for the media outlet. If there were reasons to tell about the, what is happening in the Belarus, I mean, the fears with links to the Russian experts, it would have happened, but it's uh, unfortunately almost impossible to find an expert. At the beginning of the first wave, I started to have a blog about the coronavirus. I uh, very often come, come across a situation when I can find a foreign experts, but impossible, it's impossible to find experts in Belarus. Another point is that uh, when people uh, 
are afraid they need a simple explanation that would give them an understanding of who's right and who's wrong who's a good guy bad guy and this the simple example is that the pharmacological companies are faking it this is the nothing nothing bad is happening it's just a runny nose people remember the bird flu and other pandemics when everything just dis dissipated and disappeared there was also a version version of the effects promoted by some experts from the western ones that by infectious could turn into something simple and uh, not dangerous they get weakened but indeed some infections follow this path others don't like the hiv and others there's a general trend saying that the, the virus is evolving to become a more virulent one to survive it doesn't matter whether people die or not there are many things here that cannot be explained either by an expert to a regular reader or a journalist because a journalist is a layman so the journalists usually pick what would drive more traffic responsible editorial policy uh, if it was in place would somehow con contravene it also apart from the simple explanation there could be a more complicated one called fatalism well this uh, if we can't do anything about it we should you know just deal with it not wearing masks or not get vaccinated uh, also in terms of rationalization very often it uh, follows the regular path while in some cases i know that history repeats itself uh, but in more complicated stories um, a layman get implanted the stereotypes and uh, that do not reflect the reality they're simple easy to understand and help to make decisions the last point is that uh, because a journalist and a regular person is a layman the layman in all the majority of the fields very often people uh, believe the so-called experts this expert could be a lead, opinion leader who says that it's better to buy this car not that one and feed your child with this and not that but currently uh, a layman seriously tried to discuss the, whether it's necessary to get vaccinated or not whether it's necessary to check the number of antibodies the huge number of stories uh, about our choice we make we allow somebody to make choice for us here the issue of media literacy comes up we didn't have enough time to tackle this issue during the peaceful time now it's more difficult to deal with it we see the lack of authorities in, in the media that uh, could convince people of doing something used to be some of those they're now not available and they get replaced by the media outlets that uh, whose ma major message general message uh, turns off the the public because the mass media who say the reptiloids are ruling the world uh, should are not in the position should not be in the position to advise people to get vaccinated thank you public
So what should be done here? How do we promote the scientifically based data about COVID? It's difficult to find influencers who would be good authorities for uh, Belarusians. It's even more difficult to find ch information channels that could promote this. What can be done in the current conditions? Do you have any opinion about that? Again, we it uh, boils down to media literacy. Unfortunately, it's not the most interesting thing to discuss, but those are skills. One person starts to remember the origin of the information, whether this uh, information source is trustworthy. Does it have the authority to spread this information? So it's not only about daily logic, it's about algorithm. When you're being taught something emotionally, something scary, sometimes it's worth asking questions. Why do you think so? And why are you saying that? On the other hand, in the real life, we really like to share our fears. So media literacy it is. Indeed, media literacy is great. I would like to give floor to Maria. I remember, I remembered another fake about coronavirus. It was not mentioned in the survey of the Medical Solidarity Fund, but that I came across in my local Viber chat. person there wrote that gluten-free food should be consumed to avoid coronavirus. I asked her why she's posting this. Aren't you ashamed of that if people die after the hidden your opinion. So uh, indeed media literacy should be focused more upon. Maria, what else could be done? We dived into, we've dived into the Belarusian agenda for some political reasons the elimination of the highly authoritative media outlets is uh, not good for anyone. But do you have any good experience uh, based on the Ukrainian experience? And do you have any advice for us in terms of campaigns that can be promoted to promote the scientifically based approach? Pavluk, I think uh, Um, covered what could be said about the regular media. And uh, I'll tell you more about the mm, mm, uh, social feeds and messages. Ukraine is different uh, to Belarus in the sense that uh, we can hold independent surveys. According to the latest research, uh, out, uh, survey, about 80% said that they knew uh, that the fakes were being spread, and one third of such people said that they were the origins of such information. So that's exactly what we said earlier, that even if you're afraid, you are sharing this information. Moreover, 46% in the Western region said that they do not want to get vaccinated. Those uh, uh, figures are astounding. Ukraine is facing a, a pandemic. Um, we have a very small number of people who have been vaccinated, particularly those who were social responsible and who wanted to get vaccinated at the very beginning that they got vaccinated. There are still a number of people big number of people remains who don't want to get vaccinated. There's an effect of the information bubbles that we live in. We live in uh, with people and surrounded by people in the social feeds and the, who supported vaccination. 
supported the mask wearing. And we don't know where the people who spread this conspiracy theory come from. Where does those millions of views come from? I mean, because we live in different information bubbles that do not overlap. The major question is how to get the message across to the people who are not directly in contact with us. How do we inform them that what should be done? This is one of the methods mentioned today. I just wanted to focus on it separately. It's the creation of the positive narrative. We need to tell more to such such people that there is misinformation and uh, fakes. People like that live in their own world. They're not subscribed to such uh, Telegram channels, but the positive stories can play their role. What I mean here is that, look at me, I got vaccinated and I'm wearing mask, I'm fine, and everyone around me is wearing mask and we're fine. Information of such a positive narrative, which uh, basically could spread further and reach the people that it should reach. The, in our daily life, we have people who try to raise awareness and promote information about that. It was mentioned by Lina and Natalia. They said that you spread information to your circle of friends. When you mix it up with people, you tell them uh, about the positive examples, positive cases. You're not trying to make their mind uh, saying that, uh, you know, those chips get implanted and, and all. You just say, I got vaccinated, my, uh, you know, family got vaccinated and we're fine. Because the people want to follow the majority. If they see people around them, uh, to positive examples, they would probably choose the right path of action. Another issue arises, particularly what I mentioned about the resistance misinformation and bogus stories. There are opinion leaders and bloggers who have a, a big number of followers. If they post information saying that only 15% of people were vaccinated and it is bad because this and that listen arguments. Some people, uh, there could be quite a lot of them, will read the beginning of this post saying that 13% of people have been vaccinated. And they will think if only 13% of people vaccinated, why should I get vaccinated? So it could lead to disaster. The, the people like uh, these people would not leave, read further. So opinion leaders should probably not concentrate on producing content that uh, fights the fake news and fake information, but rather to say that there are some positive examples, positive cases of fighting COVID. And to do this, you need to apply this and that measure. This is one of the areas. What public mentioned about media literacy is very important. We regularly hold trainings on that. But the question is how to reach other people. Many people know about what is happening. Those who did not want to uh, hear about that, this information, they would not join the trainings. The issue remains for Ukraine and other countries. For Belarus is uh, difficult to do now, but the role of the state would be paramount here. In Ukraine, we're aiming to have an, a strategy of the one-stop shop. We don't have a silver bullet yet, but we want to have a coordinated policy about the vaccination so that all the state channels, not only media channels, but uh, those in social feeds, they would promote the same narrative, the same message, the same line of behavior. It 
it has a cumulative effect. A person hears that from on every corner, uh, they get affected. Of course, when, and I was shocked by the latest interview when the president Lukashenko said that I, I get vaccinated only when we have a Belarusian vaccine. Bef before that, I will not get vaccinated. So what should we talk about? I mean, this, if this is a state policy for Belarus, the, a good approach would be to spread information, you know, the, like word of mouth in order to spread the information to the family members. The same is true about the chats. Why does this work? Because overall, in the post-Soviet space, people do not really trust the state that much, particularly those who lived in the Soviet Union and uh, they think that the state always lies. The state wants to do us harm. And uh, I don't know how much it was spread in Belarus, but in Ukraine, there was a wave, information wave in Viber with messages that I have a friend living in Israel or in Italy who knows the recipe to fight the coronavirus. It's like a first person stories that there is a witness possessing the unique knowledge of how you need to treat the COVID. And people believe them because that's how human psyche works. We should fight such stories with the same stories, but the positive ones. In conclusion, I would like to uh, say a few words in the global contest. One of the ways, one of the origins of uh, fake news waves is Russia, Russian media outlets. Why is it dangerous now? Because the wave is aimed at bad mouth than other vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna. But it actually um, damages the, the trust in the Sputnik V. So if a person is told that those vaccines are bad and Sputnik V is good, they will mistrust all the vaccines. And this campaign aimed against the collective West, the enemy, only produces something negative. In the Russian speaking space, uh, we have the information that undermines the trust to all the scientific medicine and to the reliability of the message that this is important to get vaccinated, has a bad cumulative effect. That's, that's all for me. Thank you, Maria. I have a paradoxical conclusion that when we see Lukashenko not only promoting the, the proper narrative, but confuses people and his authorities, it is very difficult to not get confused according to the latest Chatham House survey code about the written of trust in Lukashenko. State media are trusted by 18 people, not trusted by 18, 59%. Similar figures is true about the officials. So people might as well trust what Lukashenko says. 
jokes aside, uh, I look we'll add something. We have some questions in the chat. Could you answer them as well? I just wanted to say that Anna Barushka has raised, their, raised her hand a long time ago. we we'll start with her. Thank you very much. Once again, I just wanted to mention the warning messages in the, featured by the various media outlets about COVID that appeared last year and still remains today. There is the updated information. Any media outlets, particularly of the university and so on, you get their information about vaccination, about the COVID. I believe in Belarus there is a powerful resource like the so-called extremist channels of information. A month ago, I wanted this to ask those channels to promote, to share the scientifically based information about the COVID pandemic. And I believe the messages should have been uniform about the necessity to get vaccinated. Once again, speakers, experts um, united by the White Coats channel, the channel that is labeled as extremist by the authorities, and those doctors continuously promoted the idea of getting vaccinated, wearing masks and so on. Those channels doesn't have a huge number of followers, under 50,000 maybe, um, or less, and they cannot compare to the Tunbai. Uh, it would be really great to hear, hear something like that from so-called extremist leader Svetlana Tikhanovska. It would be great that a person who has authority in the eyes of a big number of people would promote this message. We understand that she's not a medical professional and she's not always following the tragedy that we are facing in Belarus. But if you're working for people, the people of Belarus, you need also to take part in this conflict, in this war, uh, because the, in the ICU, doctors are fighting for the lives of people. I know they have different agendas, meeting with politicians, uh, managing and governing countries where the majority of the population has been vaccinated, but there are Belarusians who are face a number of unsolved challenges. So maybe she could say that, you know, I'm keeping my distance. I uh, became vaccinated. I wearing my mask. Maybe she should have shown a good example in this respect. Thank you, Anna. It's a very interesting appeal. Before I give word to, uh, floor to Pavluk, uh, I think we should give floor to Natalia, to Svetlana Hilko, who will have to leave us very soon. She wanted to ask something. I asked Svetlana about that. I don't think she will ask the question by voice. I can read her question. The first question is uh, quite big. I try to shorten it. Are there any bills in any statistics about the seasonal flu? And can this data be somehow processed with, in order to understand whether the same people get vaccinated from the flu? Uh, like they are from the COVID. 
considering the seasonal flu epidemic and wave, maybe we should have a joint information campaign about people getting protested, protected from the flu and the COVID. Somehow people trust the anti-flu vaccine more. Colleagues, what do you think? A question about media is also pertinent. We didn't also mention, talk about the media. Svetlana had some questions about the media as well. Or exactly, she was asking what other assistance the medics need and how society can help them, the public can help them. Thank you very much. Okay, Pavlyuk raises and before, give for him to him and then ask Anya about the society. Right, okay. Uh, I think if somebody wanted to use the personal data, of the people and uh, I don't think it will be illegal to unveil the information of people who want to get vaccinated against the seasonal flu and the COVID. As to the media campaign, I think it is manageable, it just uh, needs to be well thought through because we do get some vaccines and uh, inoculations at the beginning of our life. As to the anti-flu vaccine, people do believe in it, but uh, not a huge number of people get vaccinated against flu. I'd say that this needs to be discussed further. Vadim joked about the position of Lukashenko, low level of trust in him, which is actually bad because uh, we're dealing with the authoritarian, authoritarian state and the leader. As soon as Lukashenko unveils his position, all the authorities are kind of stop doing anything against COVID. As soon as we see that the Lukashenko visiting COVID patients without masks, no fines can be uh, applied to the people who violate those measures. One of the conspiracy theories that we witness is the interpretation of events in Latvia. Latvia did vaccination help you? You have to close down, shut down. But they have to shut down because the, there's a small number of people who are vaccinated and, and Prime Minister is feeling sorry for that. But the interpretation we have, the Latvian authorities cannot cope with the coronavirus and they need to shut down the country. Two won't have the same effect. As a result, we have people who don't want to protect themselves with the vaccine. Thank you, Pavlyuk. Jokes aside, there are some serious questions. Anna, please. Regarding the vaccination, uh, anti-flu vaccination. Well, I want to make my coming out. If there are some figures about the number of vaccines used every year in Belarus against the flu, these figures are managed by the official bodies. We could calculate approximate, approximately the number of the vaccinated people, but uh, very often these are not medics. Well, we say that in terms of COVID, we're interested in the examples by the medical staff. 
The medics, unfortunately, are not good examples. They are not. They do not get vaccinated against the flu. For a while, I didn't do that either. Although we are regularly offered that possibility. Sometimes there were group vaccinations. A friend of mine was offered the French vaccine. Who helped me get vaccinated if somebody uh, decided not to do that? Before my three month internship, I also wanted to get vaccinated not to, not to suffer from the flu. I did not to have my days wasted. I got vaccinated with the anti flu vaccine. But saying that the medics are di well disciplined in this respect is wrong. And I see it not only among Belarusian colleagues, but also among the Western colleagues who lived uh, and studied not only post Soviet space, uh, but in the Western universities. Medics there, they question the necessity of vaccinations. Do I need to be part of this herd immunity? They ask questions like that. And they heat up the mistrust to the um, across the board vaccination. So on the one hand, this combination of the COVID and flu is very scary. Cases like that exist. It's very unfavorable for the patient. What the Western experts say that if you need to get vaccinated seasonally against the flu, you might as well do it with the anti-COVID vaccine. In the past, they uh, advised to dilute the vaccine. Now it's, they say they should not be diluted. It's very much about the culture, about the discipline. The pediatricians and their examples should be copied by other doctors. I mean, the example that they know that people get regularly vaccinated. The previous speaker said that I can convince my family members. I, I cannot do that. Some my family members agreed with me, others didn't. The problem, another problem we have that the communication strategies of how to communicate with the patients is not taught in Belarus. Several years ago, I participated in a seminar on this topic in Kiev. I, I paid for, to participate in the seminar because I was interested in that. I know how to find approaches, approach the people and how to change their mind. Maybe I have an inbuilt feature inside of me. I actually came up with that during my professional career. Thank you very much. We have a question from Ivan Vaitovich. I can read it. Is there information about the number of doses of vaccine shipped to Belarus? Could Lukashenko be saving on vaccines? Hence the weak information campaign. We have already 
mentioned the, a lack of the, the Chinese vaccine. With the absence of Pfizer, it uh, has the order of being uh, better than Sputnik, a reputation better than Sputnik because it was confirmed by the WHO. Anna, Anastasia, Pavlyuk. I think the answer is that this information is available. It is well known how much Russia shipped, it well known how much Belarus produced. There could be some overstatement that Belarusian officials uh, allow for. It's well known how much China shipped to us as part of the uh, aid, but it's important to interpret this data properly. It is unknown whether the this vaccine was provided to the people that really needed it and whether it will have more influence on the some people some people's career indeed minsk is the capital some things are much easier here some friends of mine wanted to get vaccinated in the region so they had to make a lot of effort for that they need to apply to certain bodies for that even though uh, the official information stated that in their particular hospitals the vaccines were the vaccine was available thank you pavlyuk i think anna what it said is some, something i don't have information about that i don't follow this information about the number of vaccines shots not so long ago about a month shipped to Belarus, 100,000 of shots. So this will be enough for 50,000 people since every person needs two shots. With several millions of people not vaccinated in Belarus, this is not enough. Secondly, the informational campaign that included surveys and people saying that they don't want to get vaccinated because they're expecting the foreign vaccine to, to be shipped into Belarus. About 40% of the respondents said so. The people who were waiting for the foreign vaccine almost instantly received offers from tour companies to go to Georgia or some other countries on a vaccination tour. I think people do not really consider the risks of going to another country to get vaccinated because they need to travel on the bus, on the airplane with lots of unvaccinated people and possibly infected people around you. By going to the streets during the pandemic times, they risk being infected without getting to their final destination where they will get vaccinated with the foreign vaccine. I think using the resources that the people have the vaccines at hand is paramount. It is the strategy that needs to be followed. Vaccines work. This is the major message that needs to be promoted to the public, that they need to get vaccinated with the vaccines they have. So it's not about the number of the vaccine. The, some people don't have any vaccines around them where they live. But since the vaccines have been produced in Belarus for a while, and the number of unvaccinated people is still huge, it is impossible to say that vaccines are not available. There could not be a deficit of vaccines in the country. And explaining the policy of non-vaccination with deficit is wrong. It's too far-fetched. 
it's not that much about the deficit of vaccine. It's just they are concentrated in different parts of the country. There can be some imbalances. Of course, if we imagine the ideal situation, we would uh, say that the more vaccines the, there are in Belarus, the better. It would not change the situation in a day, but it would improve the status quo. The slogan of getting vaccinated with what, what you have is very logical because the absence of the approval of the WHO uh, with the Sputnik V is uh, offset by the number of people who got vaccinated by the Sputnik V without uh, any uh, damaging consequences. If AstraZeneca and Pfizer better, theoretically, Sp Sp Sputnik V is available, so Sputnik V should be used. We're nearing the end of our conference, well, meeting. And I would conclude it in the following way. We spoke about the vaccines of the seasonal flu. It's a kind of a coming out from me. I've never uh, received any shots against the seasonal flu. I thought that the risks were not worth it. So when you said today that it's a, that you had a, the inoculation before as an important trip, I remembered my experience before my serious trips. I I probably should get vaccinated against the seasonal flu as well, since I have received vaccination against the coronavirus. This is my personal conclusion. I don't think this is the most widespread conclusion now, considering the fakes that we are surrounded with. We hope that our discussion among others contributed to the spreading of the positive information. The narrative mentioned by Maria that we should promote the positive narrative is very important. This discussion was very important for me in the sense that we discussed the lack of a link connection between the patients and the public and the medical doctors. I don't know who is to blame for that. I'm uh, confident though that we need to do our best to improve the situation. So I just wanted to thank everyone who participated in today's discussion and to those who will watch it in the Press Club's YouTube channel or the Medical Solidarity Foundation YouTube channel. Please, let's make conclusions and spread this information despite numerous fakes. Let's talk about the importance of the vaccine shots. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time at the meetings of the uh, Expert Club.